So I too have part been participating in some of these create your own cocktail things lately. Um, so in in general, I'm think I'm thinking about perhaps doing a show you guys what I make kind of situation. So if you're interested in me doing that, I'll post up something on the Will's Review page. And if you guys want it, I will then give you guys recipes to try out for yourself. I recently did a really interesting mix with uh, different cold brew coffees and, uh, you know, Baileys and rum chata and stuff like that. And it turned out amazing. Uh, so I was really thinking about this earlier. I've been messing. I mean, the government even told you liquor stores are essential. So I, I'm trying to make use of it. You know, I'm just trying to, <laughs> to show just how patriotic I can be at times. Um, and if you, if you want any good drink ideas, you know, I, you know, just message me, message me, but I'm going to post up something and you guys let me know. And I'll just, every once, every, every once in a while, I'll throw up a new mix for you guys to try out at home. Uh, doesn't need to be locked down. Doesn't need to be quarantined. Just it could be a Friday night. Want to do something different. Hell, it can be a Tuesday night. Had a rough day. I got you. Now <laughs> we're going to get to these movies. I was... I mean, I was really going in at the start of this week, and then the rest of the week just kind of caught up to me with work. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through. I start off this week with a bunch of animal documentaries, because I was, I was ragging everybody for the Tiger King and a lot of the other documentaries. Because I'm telling you, nature documentaries, nature, and by nature I include outer space. You know, that is a natural thing. Uh, these things are interesting. Some sports biopics, I'll give you that as far as human stories, but most of it you can find out like as far as what happened online. There's no point. What you're watching a sports biopic for is literally the reactions of the players, like their first-hand testimonials to how they felt in these situations that we know already happened because that's not going to be everywhere. Um, but the animal stories, you never know what to look for. You just get to enjoy it for what it is and learn stuff along the way. So what I did was a lot of people got Disney Plus a couple months back for Mandalorian and then forgot that they had it. So I decided to look at the Disney Plus animal stories for you guys. So the first one I watched was African Cats, which is an older one. Um, and it's, it's the story of a family of cheetahs and a family of lions trying to survive uh, going into a dry season and moving to different territories. I absolutely love this. The story of the cheetahs was really fun. The story of the the lions was really interesting. Um, like even the takeover of the new king and his and his you know sons. You know it was, it was really interesting. They the best part about a Disney uh, animal documentary is that they try to make it dramatic. Right? It's not just a matter of and no the lion no the lions have names. You actually start to be able to discern them by the end of the film. Mm. Um, they explain the emotional connections between the groups and why they do what they do. It's just really, it's more of a fun learning experience. And I think the best part about these is that it's important to watch this with your family. You know, you help the kids learn some stuff. You're learning stuff yourself as an adult because most of us, you know, we, we don't know much about the damn animals. We just go to the zoo and go, oh, that's cute. That's a lion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we know nothing about them. But it's really great to, to have, it's, it's great to bond with the family watching the animals bond it also helps you know makes you feel a deeper connection and appreciation for animals because we always think of them as lesser and you realize just how much you have in common with even a lion you know and one thing that doesn't change no matter what the species is a mother's love is the most dangerous thing in the world <laughs> <laughs> most dangerous i watch a lioness just fight off four male lions to protect her daughter that's what's up you know what i'm saying never mess with a crazy and upset mama never um, but yeah, so African Cats, that's one I, I highly recommend. Um, also, Monkey Kingdom. I thought this was very unique. Uh, and this particular one is about uh, a, a monkey who, in her particular society, is like the lowest of the low. So this really felt like a Disney movie because you're watching this lowly monkey, um, literally a monkey I person, this is an old school Disney, um, rise up through the ranks as she you know, helps her group of, of monkeys become you know a queen to their society so it's really interesting and again in most of these stories it literally starts off with the fact that the mother now has a child and so it forces them to to change their behavior because their number one focus is to make sure that their child can become a functioning adult in their society so it's, it's really interesting to get that look um 
I give that one a 4 out of 5. African Cats, 5 out of 5. Now, the one that felt weak to me was bears. I felt like they were following many different kinds of bears and their different journeys to, like, find fish, right? And something about a bear looking for fish, and I was just like, wasn't that just, like, a five-minute part of the Jungle Book? <laughs> of all the different things you can do about a bear, you just... I would have even enjoyed something about the bear trying to find honey. That might have been funnier because of Winnie the Pooh. Um, but they went to go find fish, and then there were a couple of bears fighting over fish, and then some some bears that couldn't go down a mountain. Or, uh, this one was pretty meh. I think the only thing, I, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 just because there was a lot about bears that were mentioned that I didn't really know. Um, but they're also not as smart as you would think, because this one bear just kept going to fight another bear that kept beating his butt. And it was just like, dude, how long is it going to take you to realize, like, you can't beat this alpha? You're he's not, not even, a, he's you're not not even a quitter. The, you're not even the beta at this point. Like, you're, like, all the way a zeta. Like, you need to, you need to chill, bro. Yeah, so, you know, they may be determined, but they're dumb as hell. <laughs> if only you can use a Bugs Bunny sign on them if you're in the wild, right? Just send them mm -hmm. in the opposite direction. Uh, then uh, another thing I, I watched for you guys was some Marvel. You know, the kids are stuck at home still, you're stuck at home with them. So I tried to find some interesting stuff uh, for the kids as well. So there's a uh, Thor, Tales of Asgard, which is the story, an animated story about a young Thor and his first real adventure with Loki. Um, notice I said with, not against. Uh, this one is a really, it's a fun story, it's different. It's one of the few Marvel animations I think that is pretty stand-up. I wouldn't exactly call it DC animation quality, but it's not one that you even feel you need to compare because there's definitely a target audience here. Um, I give it a 4 out of 5. I think your child will enjoy it. You don't need to be there to watch it with them so you can get a couple minutes piece for yourself. Um, same thing with Next Avengers. It's an old movie that came out. It's finally on Netflix. Um, you can go give it a watch. I think that it's, it's a really good tale. It's, an, it's a good idea. The only thing that this movie doesn't get a 5 out of 5 for because I really think that they did a good job interpreting future Children of the Avengers uh, is that literally the ending of the movie makes you feel like the whole movie didn't make sense since the bad guy was beaten so easily. And I'm sorry if it's a spoiler, this movie is like nine years old. And <laughs> it's a Marvel Kids animated movie. If you think the villain won, maybe you're a bear. Uh, <laughs> uh, next, I was surprised to see this out there. It's called Hulk, um, Where Monsters Dwell. And essentially, it's him meeting up with Doctor Strange and another group of, of monsters who are working under S.H.I.E.L.D. I had a lot of potential for this because the, the Hound's previous movie and previous storylines have been interesting in the few animated films they've been in. This really felt like one really long, bad episode of one of the recent Marvel animations that was on like the Disney Channel. This is dragged on and dragged on and dragged on and the action never really got any good um, and it's one of Doctor Strange's more powerful but also not well wanted villains <laughs> <laughs> so you know he Doctor Strange has a very unique storylines and so he deals with sometimes he deals with villains who are literally physical manifestation of concepts we can only comprehend and when you try to do that on a major level because he had a movie with and then add in the Hulk, it just it does, doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, I give this a 2 out of 5. I, I'm not even sure your kids will like it, so I would I would recommend skipping it. If you see it, they get excited, tell them not. Nah, wait for Halloween, because at least that day they'll be hopped up on sugar. They won't be disappointed by anything. <laughs> um, also on Netflix, there is something called Absurd Planet. I really, I thought this was a really brilliantly done animal documentary, because it's narrated you know, metaphorically by Mother Earth, right? The narrator pretends to be Mother Earth, and she's explaining to you the uniqueness to the creatures that she has on her planet. Um, and I think that's really cool conceptually, as well as the fact that some of the animals they talk about and some of the way they relate to them, they have a lot of comedy brought into it when explaining certain facts. It felt like a really long but well-welcomed version of a Bill Nye episode. Um, and I think this is a really great something for a family to enjoy. Um, I think this is a great way to make it so that way your kid learns something without realizing they're learning something like when they used to watch Zoom on PBS. So I recommend <laughs> it. Oh, Absurd Planet on Netflix. Definitely watch it. Um, now, I had to, of course, watch some stuff on Netflix 
for myself because, well, you know, I have to watch the show, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I uh, recently watched uh, Never Have I Ever, which is the tale of three girls in California of different ethnic backgrounds who are, you know, it's a coming of age story. One of the girls is uh, not necessarily accused, but everyone believes she had uh, sex with the hottest guy in school, and she kind of lets it rock as she's befriending him um, behind the scenes. She's also dealing with the fact that she's more American, and her family is very Indian, and her father died at a performance of hers the year before. And as a result, she was paralyzed for three months in a wheelchair. Psychosomatic. It sounds way more complicated than is they explain pretty much all that in like, like the first ep episode and kind of go about your business. Um, you know, her friend is coming to terms with her sexuality. Another friend is coming in, uh, to terms with like, you know, the loss of her mother. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on in this show. Um, a lot of the characters are deeper than you really think of them. Um, also, I mean, another thing is that it's a really big thing speaking to how important therapy can be for someone. Like, actually, and not necessarily having to see the therapist, but having to be able to come to terms with your actual feelings. Because you get, you know, it'll cause you to act out until you do. You have some sort of idea. You can actually talk about how you feel. Um, so, I recommend the show to everyone. I think it's a great show of all ages. Because um, it follows tweets. I mean, maybe some Karens wouldn't want their little ones, to, like, little ones to see it. My household, I was watching Rated R from when I was three. So, you know, censorship is really more so the responsibility of a parent to break down and, and teach their children about the subject matter. Because guess what, folks? They're going to learn about it someday. Might as well be through their parent. Um, another series, uh, another um, show that I watched was actually a stand-up. Uh, Kanan Guild, he did a stand-up called Yours Sincerely. In an Indian comic who, honestly, never heard of him, but he's been doing a world tour. He is really, really funny. He tells a really great story. He comes back to a lot of the material that he d introduces to you over and over again throughout the show. But the best part is that he ends the show on a deep thought. And he gives his own positive spin to it, right? So that you're not left just in a deep thought worrying about the world like a lot of people do for whatever reason. He gives you something to think about, but gives you a bit of positivity to it. While he just made you laugh for two hours. And the best part about it is that anything of Indian reference that others, those of us of other cultures will not understand, he thoroughly, and I mean thoroughly, explains to the audience. So you're pretty much straight if you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to watch Indian comment. Watch this. Do it. <laughs> just do it. This is, this is a 4.5 out of 5. Like I said, the only thing about it that may happen is that you won't understand some of the Indian references. So sometimes a joke for most people will be killed because you have to explain it. But he does a pretty good job about explaining before he even goes for the punchline. So give it a shot. Give it a chance. I'm telling you, by the end of it, you'll be pleasantly pleased with the performance. Um, another thing I found was The Hunt. The Hunt is, was a movie that was supposed to be released in theaters. And it was, uh, you know, at home viewers. Uh, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty good movie. It's just very straightforward, right? There's no real big surprise unless you really need to know for the movie to kind of make sense from the get go one big twist oh guess what you figure it out within the first 30 minutes of the movie so bada bing bada boom but it is a really fun ride you will be surprised by some of the early early deaths and i mean the cast is star studded for real real it's just uh not everybody makes it past the 30 minute mark in the movie so uh, <laughs> I'd say I'd say give it a watch, I'd give it a three point five out of five. Um, but you know, right now it's straight to home, so it will cost you twenty dollars. I'm not gonna tell you to spend twenty dollars on it. Wait for it to hit something else first, right? But definitely watch it when you can, for free. Um, another another show I, I tried watching was a uh, Higher Power. Um, it's a, or it's a, it's a movie on Hulu that's supposed to be about. Uh, a person who comes in contact with cosmic energies that were originally going to destroy Earth uh, until someone sent this man on a journey that allowed him to become a creature that could save Earth from cosmic destruction. 
it had a lot of potential if you read the bios that's why i gave it a shot and the producers on the project have been a part of other sci-fi projects that are amazing this was an utter disappointment the only reason i will give it a two out of five is that conceptually like the first few minutes of the movie setting up what could possibly happen were amazing it's just the rest of the movie just fell apart uh we also have the show uh pure it's a show that derives from a movie um it's about you know a girl who's meeting her father and he takes her to one of those purity like father daughter dating things and all the the stuff that goes left in the darkness that's actually inside her and her you know sibling and all that mm -hmm. it's one of those things where i started it and felt i had to finish it it wasn't bad but it wasn't good i give it a three out of five if you have, I mean, I know we're all at that point where we're just desperate to find something to watch right now. You can watch it. Like, if you if you were wondering, if you're like, it's on my list, I'm not sure if I, just watch it. Get it out your system. It's not a waste of time, but it's a great way to kill time just because. Um, they also put up Monster and Men, a movie I wanted to see when it was in theaters. And I'm, after watching it on Hulu, I'm really glad I didn't. This is, uh, I think, the... Denzel Washington's son's first major motion picture. He's playing a cop. Uh, essentially, it's their parodied, but not in the funny sense, but in just like a their version of of the Eric Garner case. A man selling cigarettes outside of a store in Brooklyn, not Staten Island, uh, was shot by an officer supposedly for resisting arrest. There's someone who videotapes the incident and the harassment that he receives. There's a cop who is on the force but is minority. And he has to deal with, you know, being black and being a cop and having that uncomfortable conversation with family friends. Um, there's another kid who is being racially profiled by local police who are racially profiling everyone in his neighborhood. And he's trying to deal with what to do as a young black male, but also a young, young black male with potential to go on to college because of a sports um, scholarship. And he's a, a sought out baseball player and everything is happening at a time in his life where he has to decide whether or not to do something for his people or to just take the easy way out and just go off to school and hopefully live the better life his father wants for him. There's a lot of good stuff in here. There's a lot of great conversations being had, a lot of great thought. But here's the thing. It's a movie. It's supposed to have a point, but it's supposed to make sense when delivering said point. And in general, black people, we love having conversations. We love talking about stuff we love, love talking about doing stuff but nothing gets done having these conversations nothing is actually getting done so instead of making these movies that are all about asking difficult questions maybe we can make a movie with a possible solution to inspire not to just make people think because guess what folks we don't need a movie for us to keep thinking we do we have to think to survive every day now, I tried out three new things for you guys, or three news, or found, found three series on different stuff. So first, there's a new series on Amazon Prime that I fell in love with. It's the, probably the second series on Amazon Prime I've actually enjoyed and liked all the way through. It's called Upload. It's in a society where near your death you can choose whether to die in the natural sense or go to a virtual heaven where they will literally fry your brain off and upload you into a computer. A, a man is dating a very wealthy woman whose family is involved in the business. He has to make such a difficult choice and ends up in a virtualized heaven and he meets an amazingly beautiful Cameroonian uh, who is his customer service rep and angel, if you will. And the love that builds between them while he's also in a relationship technically with his living girlfriend <laughs> it is a very funny quirky love story if you are a fan of the good place it's good for you i give this movie uh, or give this series a 4.5 out of 5 i loved it i think the only thing about it is that there wasn't more of it i really wanted more where it left off at left me a little bit uncomfortable thus why not a perfect score i would have loved at least even one more episode um, but they left you on a cliffhanger for a reason. I understand that, so I can't hate on it. Um, also, I tried Tubi. People have been talking to me about Tubi and Voodoo and things like that. 
So I found Let Me In as a horror movie from 2011 on Tubi that was worth a watch. It's just a very intricate movie about a, a boy who falls in love with a vampire, but he doesn't know it. That's about all I'll tell you about it. Um, if you like the movie Kick-Ass, the uh, young girl who is beating everybody's butt is the lead actress in this film. <laughs> and on uh, Voodoo, I watched Tekken, because I, I, mean, I just saw that there, I had to watch it, just give it a chance. The action section, honestly, is best on this. But, uh, but the one I want to talk to you about is a, is a movie called Gangsta Girls. And this is another uh, Florida movie about two girls in the hood trying to make it in their rap careers and, and hustle their way through life. Why do people make such bad movies? <laughs> I'm only going to give this movie a 2 out of 5 just because it was so bad that parts of it were just kind of that good. Because I can't imagine the behind the scenes of the making of this movie. But it sounds like West Tampa is the worst place in Florida Hands down. On that note, this has been another episode of Will's Review. <laughs> I'll catch you guys next time.